Hey! What you wanna do? What you wanna do? You scared? I ain't never been scared. You soft, good. You know how much generational hatred it takes to rather have an op alive and crippled than just dead and out the way? It's easy for us to forget, but for most animals, nature's a jihad from the jump, a gauntlet of grotesquerie, where if you die of old age, you're a spoiled minority. And with millions trying to survive at the same time, that can only lead to one thing, beef. And whether due to competition, an underdog finally biting back, or just an animal choosing problems over peace, you're gonna see that some animals have a genuine grudge sequence into their DNA. But two things real quick. One, this is technically a remake of an older video, but as a rule of thumb, anything with iPhone 8 quality or Apple headphones for a mic should be disregarded. And two, while the facts and fades might be true, you're gonna hear me anthropomorphize animals a lot in this video and treat them like humans. But at the end of the day, animals are just playing the cards they were dealt and doing what comes naturally to survive. That being said, hating each other with prejudice-laced passion is what comes naturally to these two. Lions and hyenas might have a beef more infamous and more on sight than Tom and Jerry. It's one that involves spawn killing, Jujutsu Kaisen level jumpings, calorie jacking, on both sides mind you, and the aforementioned handicapping. Lions and hyenas have generational beef that's been marinating for as long as they've been alive and it's all thanks to the power struggle between an overgrown afro kitty and a maligned mongoose on steroids. In some places, lions sit at the top, and in others, the Serengeti laugh tracks the dominant predator. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I don't have a bias, but there are no good guys or bad guys. Both are apex predators that start off life as pine-sized cubs just trying to survive the brutal RNG of life. Something I truly wish on none of you. Lord of the Beasts ain't a game you wanna play, but maybe Beast Lord is. Beast Lord The New Land is an animal-themed strategy mobile game with not only vivid level designs and a dope aesthetic, but more than 500 animals you can add to your party. But hold on, let me give you some lore. So because of a sudden change in climate and your previous home now being unlivable, you, the Beast Lord, have to find a new place to build your kingdom. But before you do anything, first, you gotta pick a lord. Basically the point guard of the pack, the, the quarterback of the creatures, the one that's gonna lead y'all to the promised land, and you can choose to be a collector, an invader, or a developer. Names kind of speak for themselves, but as a collector, your job is gathering resources for your colony while also Euro-stepping danger. Maybe you're a klepto that rises to high pillaging and plundering pirate style, in which case you probably identify as an invader. Or you might just be a visionary developer, forging empires and crafting alliances that shape the very landscape of the game. Speaking for the newbies, you're probably going to want to go with collector, since that just means more resources early on. That is if I'm being strategic. If I'm being a menace, you'll definitely see me as an invader. Either way, whatever you choose is going to decide the fate of your entire kingdom. But no pressure, have fun with it. And to make sure you do, Beast Lord's got an exclusive offer. Use the code BL777 to score free startups and resources you're going to be glad you had. So to join the 10 million that already have, make sure you go ahead and download Beast Lord The New Land using the link in the description and start writing your Beast Lord story today. But if you're a Lion Cub, there's about a coin flip chance your story ends before the first chapter and the Laugh Happy Vice Trap has a lot to do with it. And obviously, Vice very much versa. But what if I told you this feloform family feud ain't even the worst beef lions have to deal with? You lose tough points when it takes 10 of you to press one of them. Nah, but the real roadblock to this panther's pursuit of happiness? The animal so vindictive, folks nicknamed it Black Death and Widowmaker. Cape Buffalo stand on business, and they'll trap lions in trees for hours, and they'll even hit an Uno reverse and hunt the hunter. And with hers that can reach quadruple digits, they'll more than weaponize the power of friendship. Say what you will, I've never seen a hyena make a lion look like that. Not to mention they'll play keep away with a lion cub, and it's all thanks to mobbing. And mobbing's exactly what you see here, and it's fueled by the beef between a rogue stealth assassin build without the bulk or squad advantage of lions and hyenas, and a highly intelligent, highly social tank of a primate. Divided baboons are leopard lunch meat. United and the leopard gets folded like an omelet. You know it's an iconic beef when the kids are involved, and both leopards and baboons will kidnap the young of each other. With leopards, some say it's a chess play to bait the baby's bigger, meatier parents. While baboons have enough foresight to cancel a cup before it can grow up into a problem. That's not the only theft they commit. Baboons are underrated predators that'll turn a gazelle baby shower into a homicide and a happy meal. Which means baboons aren't above pocket picking other predators. Which makes it wild hypocritical that the same malice monkeys will ruin leopard hunts with an alarm call to warn their prey. It takes a special level of hatred to bread block a predator on the hunt. It's like how we used to think humpback whales were the guardians of the sea for saving other animals from killer whales. Whole time it's an ancestrally traumatized cetacean going out of its way to interfere with orca hunts to make sure the zebras go home hungry. You see, the whale killers will often murk baby whales, and the humpback hood does not let that slide. And it's not just on sight, any sense is an invitation. One time a pair of spite-powered humpbacks sabotaged a group of orcas after a grey whale calf and proceeded to harass them for six hours straight. Seals, sunfish, and apparently even penguins have benefited from the beef. As the humpback motto states, no orca alive shall prosper. 
and that's on pod. It might seem like the leopard gets grief religiously in this beef, just know when the lights go out, it's a different story. In fact, it's the busted night vision and being the best tree climbing cat that makes it a bane to baboon. So I'd say it's pretty even. And if you're wondering what happened to him, he's fine. And the very next day, he was seen trying a tree or porcupine, so clearly his wrist calculator's broken. But at least baboons have numbers on their side against an athletically disrespectful <coughs> feline. Imagine having problems with the biggest cat on the planet and having to run that fade solo. The tiger's the death stroke of the cat world, a walking census subtraction that'll take down gars, crocodiles, and tigers are on record eradicating elephants. They even dare go after bears, including the most homicidal one on the planet. The sloth bear's gotta be the most trigger happy of the bears, and it's all thanks to this thing I just made up called the predator-prey paradox. Basically, it means you're infinitely more fornicated in the fortune department if a moose presses you than if a bear, because with predators, you gotta convince them you're worth the effort, but an animal that already gets hunted will turn you into a was before they take time to judge your intent. Real life Baloo often gets bodied by tigers and leopards. Also, most of their diet is insects, and the same claws that help them break into termite apartments means they can't just climb from the smoke like some other bears. Which means what you got here is a high-strung insect eater with predator hardware. It's like a giant honey badger, and they're so unpredictable that folks actually fear them more than they do tigers. Not for no reason, because despite having a bigger population and a wider range, brown bears actually murk half the people this floppy-faced anxiety attack does. But you see the thing with tigers, bears can make up to 5% of their diet, and they usually target cubs or moms with cubs. The tiger trauma runs so deep that since tigers have been known to imitate sandbar deer while hunting them, sloth bears got pavloved into panicking at the sound of real deer. So what you got here is a beef between a predator and prey that opts for fight over flight. Sloth bears will square up to a tiger head on, and the sheer balls of facing them can intimidate inexperienced tigers that don't know any better. The ones that do prefer to catch them slipping at the termite mound, ambushing the sloth bear and going for its neck. Because once the slothy has to grapple with a giant house cat, it's up for him. But even then, the equalizer of Asia better come correct, and sloth bears instinctively go for the face, and even in a losing effort, the bear can cripple the tiger. Especially when it's a mother ready to die about her baby. And I was not kidding, put the aggressive bull cut in a higher weight class and lions would have the same problems. And like any great beef, both sides have a healthy level of respect and fear, where sloth bears usually avoid tigers, and tigers are generally wary of bears. Meanwhile, the next beef has one animal literally praying they don't run into each other. 2020 had a lot of headlines, so many that you probably forgot the murder hornet subplot. These were Asian giant hornets, and they are pretty much black air force energy in the form of a bug. Their sting is sharp enough to poke through gear beekeepers normally wear, and their finishing move literally involves decapitating their prey with their mandibles. In Japan, these homicide hornets knock off 30 to 50 people a year, and it's not just people getting put on shirts. They also severely bully bees, and unlike bees, they can sting multiple times, can deliver 10 times the venom, are five times bigger, and are built like a tiny armored fighter jet. That's how murder hornets can obliterate entire beehives. So when the Asian hornets started popping up in the US, people were understandably shook. And it was believed only one bug could stand up to the aerial assault. The praying mantis is straight up oppressive. An ambush hunter that has lizards, frogs, fish, and even small birds on its body count. They have wings, but they rarely fly, because in a world of fight or flight, they've been made their choice. And in 2020, a video would go viral of a mantis murking a hornet, going for brain like a sapio. In the wild, it's a different story, and it's often hornets that get caught packing up praying mantises. They're arguably the only insect that can give 10% of the Furious 5 problems. But as you can see, a mantis won't miss a chance to settle the score, but who has the upper hand in his rivalry? Unfortunately, it might not be who you want. According to scientists, it's usually the mantis taking the L, so much that mantises are actually a well-documented source of food for the hornets. And while the god-fearing kung fu roaches get their licks in when they can, pretty much everything has to go right for them to come out on top. But also, you peep out a terminator termite ripped off its legs before eating it alive, don't try and tell me this ain't personal. The sad truth is, this hornet was actually anesthetized before it got manhandled. They literally had to nerf the hornet to gift wrap a W for the mantis. The mantis might not be the answer against a Bundy bug, but damn it if they don't give them a fight. Hell, so do bees. The Sunny bees have been known to swarm an offending hornet and vibrate so hard, they literally cook the wasp alive. And while both bees and mantises get their moments, this is the first beef to have human intervention. But it's not like the next beef, which was 100% caused by humans. The heaviest snake on the planet is the green anaconda, and the second heaviest is currently slithering all over Florida. The Burmese python can measure nearly 20 feet long, weigh up to and over 200 pounds, and kills anything from dogs to deer, to birds to bobcats. Normally you'd have to go to Southeast Asia to see them, but thanks to Florida's fetish for f***ery, along with illegal pet releases, the same predator that puts the noose in nuisance is now a legitimate part of the population. They were first seen in the Everglades in 1979. Today, they're hundreds of thousands strong. There's even a theory that in 1992, Florida folded to Hurricane Andrew, which leveled a python breeding facility and allowed them all to escape. Today, it's believed that for every one python that gets sighted, there's hundreds if not up to a thousand that don't. 
And with 30,000 sightings from 2008 to 2010, safe to say Florida's officially finding out. The problem is, back in Burma, they have tigers and leopards to keep them in check, but here, there's only one animal that can hope to stop them. Alligators are a prehistoric assault weapon, and on the rare, they've been known to murk cougars and black bears. And as predators without prejudice, they'll also feed on smaller snakes like the python. The problem is, once pythons get big enough, they'll eventually spin the block and cook gators. So now what you got is a sledgehammer with teeth and a leather straitjacket in an arms race constantly trying to eat each other, and I'm still not doing the beef justice. When the bane of Burma swallows an alligator, its body goes into overdrive. Its heart rate increases, organs like its heart, kidneys, and liver all get bigger, and its metabolism hits another gear. Not only can a python digest a whole alligator in only a week, if Dr. Steven Sikor of the University of Alabama is right, it actually takes less energy for them to down a gator than other options like rats or pigeons. I bet you think that's metal. Wait till you hear what he pulls. Cause pythons will actually read their victim's heart rate while squeezing them to death, so they know when to stop. Problem is, alligators can slow their heart rate all the way down to 2-3 to three beats a minute. This means the snake can end up calling it too soon and prematurely start swallowing the gator alive. Only for it to struggle hard enough to bust through the snake like a messed up jack in the box. Well they both died, but nothing says beef more than if I'm going down, best believe death taking this 2 for 1. That's how ugly competition can get. And this is the other side. Foxes and owls have no love loss, and it's for the classic reason of them pretty much having the same grocery list. Also, foxes will swipe owl chicks, and some owls, like the eagle owl, will murk them right back. But it's the snowy owl and the arctic fox that run into each other the most, especially with the white air force building nests on the ground, and foxes being willing to steal from anyone. Most of the time though, it's a lot of this, a lot of posturing, and a whole lot of hold me back. Whether it's an owl-fox feud or a reptile dysfunction, most animal rivalries just start with them trying to put food on their plate. But what about a beef between animals working together? Octopus will straight up deck fish in the face, and according to science, it's a case of workplace assault. Octopus and fish like groupers often team up to hunt, since the octopus can chase prey through coral crevices, and if the prey tries to do the race in open water, they get got by the grouper. We see two problems. One, in a partnership, someone's bound to get shorted, and two, octopus are smart enough to hold grudges and just do stuff out of spite. An octopus named Truman decided he wasn't rocking with one of the researchers, so every time he'd see her, he'd give her the old siphon saltwater shower. Eventually, she would go off to college and then come back months later to visit, and at that point, Truman hadn't been on disrespectful timing in a minute. Yeah, that streak ended the moment he saw her, as he super soaked her on sight. So octopus that feel like they're getting cheated in a partnership are much more likely to get punchy. Sometimes they'll lash out just to keep the fish in line. And sometimes if an octopus got backdoored in the past, they'll just project it all over a new fish that didn't even do anything. And since octopus can hunt with several fish at a time, they'll even get petty and ban the offender from the entire hunting party for the aquatic crime of embezzlement. That's why one of the worst things to beef with is intelligence. Just ask coyotes, since ravens and coyotes often end up scavenging for the same scraps, especially when they belong to wolves. But of course the generational instigator the raven will straight up snitch on coyotes trying to pinch off the wolf pack. And while Wally's running for his life, what does the raven do but fly directly over him like a helicopter during a police chase? Imagine getting violated by a wolf pack, all cause a goth tweety put a hit out. Last thing you want to do is make enemies with an animal smart enough to do something about it. Something a city in South Africa is learning the hard way. Cause Cape Town's currently being overrun by baboons. And like most things, it's our fault. Cause no matter what you tell them, there's always going to be tourists feeding panhandling primates. The only issue is baboon society runs on bullying, where dominant monkeys will basically steal the lunch money of lower ranks. So not only do baboons not fear humans, but because people kept feeding them, a lot of them see all humans as low ranks and treat them like it. And they've gotten OD disrespectful about it. Cape Town baboons have been known to break into houses to raid fridges, they'll mug small children, and you can even get carjacked by a whole troop. Thanks to the Cape Nature Conservation Laws Amendment Act, it's illegal to feed, trap, poison, or kill the monkeys, meaning these habitual line steppers are above the law. In 2011, a man went to court over shooting a baboon after he said eight of them broke into his kitchen and started attacking him and his wife. But with thug monkeys also stealing crops, some people said f*** it and started fighting back. And not only do the monkeys end up getting hurt or murked, it only makes the baboons lash out even harder. That's not the dental of an animal you want problems with. But at the end of the day, the baboons are just doing what comes naturally, and they wouldn't even have to be on timing if we didn't go and build a city on their front lawn. Plus, a baboon can go through your trash can and find more nutrition in 30 seconds than it would in 6 hours of foraging, so we can't be mad at them for working smarter. All we can do is what every other animal in this video already does, and just find a way to deal with it, even if it means a baboon takes your hood pass. But that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you drink water, hug your mother. Father too. Yo, for real, stop trying these monkeys, man. I promise you won't like how that story ends. And I'ma see y'all in the next one. Ginger in the wood, here you are, here you are, and you've got the prettiest ginger in the world, oh yes you are, and you're the spunkiest terror ever. <laughs>